Can you say hello? <laughs> Good. Merry meet YouTubers and welcome to my channel. This is my first video for my YouTube channel and I thought a good introduction would be an altar and sacred space video and also I'd like to introduce my kitty precious soft soft say hello no she's not gonna say hello her name's precious and we just call her soft and she likes to hang out in here with me often she's on that second shelf there we call her shelf kitty when she does that so Basically, I am living in Washington, D.C. in a very small apartment and, well, because the cost of good living is crazy here, so I don't have, like, a magic room or uh, outdoor altar space or a yard or porch or anything like that. Basically, I have one half of the bedroom. <laughs> And I've sort of made it into, as so far, as much of a witchy space as I can. Hi, precious. Hello. Hello, my darling. She's come to say hello. You'll probably see lots of her on the channel because she's a bit of a, ho a camera hog in a hand. And she doesn't like being ignored. Like, not that she's ever ignored. But she certainly acts like she is if you don't pay attention to her for more than five seconds. So anyway, uh, first off, I guess, is, like, well, this is my altar. It was a vanity, as you can see, the little stool for the vanity is over there, to, uh, I put it over there to help Precious get to her window perch, because she's a bit of a scaredy cat and is afraid she's going to bash into the glass if she jumps from the floor to the windowsill, so I had to give her a stool. Hello, sweetheart. Yeah. So, yeah, it was my vanity. I kept my makeup and everything in it. There was a mirror on the back there. But I actually didn't use it as much as I probably should have. It, it was pretty expensive. But, uh, so when I, I've been practicing for about, Jesus, 20, 21 years. And I go through, I guess, waves of, and I think this happens with all religions and all people of all religions, where you have moments in your life of being more devout and practicing your religion on a regular basis, and it always does make you, make you feel better. But when life gets like madhouse, it's really sometimes kind of easy to let religion go. And that's not a nice thing. It's not a good thing. And I guess it's been the last, like, year or so. I've been pretty tough for me. And part of my, I, I don't, I guess, I don't want to call it a recovery process, but part of me, like, making 2015 a better year was a sort of rededication to my path. And part of that was creating a sacred space where I could practice, I could meditate, I could just just be and help me sort of ground and center myself. So that's what I did. I turned my fairly unused vanity into my altar. So I will show you all the stuff on it and sort of explain where it came from, what its purpose is to me, blah blah blah. Um, I guess first off is the vanity itself, or the altar table itself, which it is now, is, uh, as you can see, it's got little drawers, it's got like six little drawers over here, and one in the middle there, and flowers on it and stuff. I'm, pre I'm eventually going to repaint it, but that's a process for the summertime when it's not so wet outside. I don't know if you can see, but it is raining outside, so I had to shut the window because the windowsill was getting all wet. So, um, the vanity. And in the drawers, I have various things. This is like my herb, or this is all incenses, and they're all labeled. I also have a, a book. Uh, this here, Choose Your Own Path book. 
where I keep sort of an inventory of incense, oils, herbs, things like that. So I can keep track of what I'm low on. So yeah, this is my incense drawer. And then this is herbs. I have a smaller little soapstone mortar and pestle in here that I don't really use since I bought this one. It's an olive wood uh, from Pakistan, I believe, is where it was from. I don't know. I got it at, uh, what was it, TJ Maxx, Marshalls, in their home goods department. Olive wood, and it's beautiful, and it's smooth, and I love... If you can see, there's little imperfections. The wood is cracked there. There's some knots and scratches and scars, which I find gives it more personality, and I think it's beautiful. So I sort of retired this little soapstone one, and this is part of my herb collection, which will, at some point soon, be organized into all those empty corked jars. I have another delivery of herbs coming and that will probably be when I organize everything into those jars. I have little uh, chalkboard style labels so I can write on it in chalk and then change it out if I need to without having to take the whole label off. I think that's very cool. Uh, these are all my stones and crystals like amethyst, rose quartz, jet. I've got it all. I've got them all labeled and whatnot. I've got a several rose quartz wands in here. And I've got like five of them. There was six. One of them broke, which kind of really bummed me out. But in here, candles. Uh, all different kinds of candles, tea lights, regular candles, small little candles, votives. Uh, I've got little beeswax spell candles. They burn for only like half an hour for those times when you need to do a spell where the candle burns completely out. I just can't be sitting here for five hours waiting for one of like these candles to burn out. So I got these little beeswax ones off of Etsy. I'll put a link in the bottom to the lady I bought them from. Uh, some more tea lights. There's not really anything in this drawer right now. So that's basically what's in the drawers. The altar cloth is sort of a special story. As you can see, it's a sort of a satin brocade. It's got a green background with purple. At least it does right now. It is reversible. I bought uh, two different kinds of fabric, the same kind in different colors. The other side is purple background with green. So, from the spring equinox to the fall equinox, I use the green because it's a time of growth, it's a time of life for the world. And from the fall equinox to the spring equinox, I use the, I flip it over and use the purple backgrounded side because it's the, tar the darker time of year. So, I made that myself. I'm not great at sewing. It didn't take a lot of talent, so people, you know, I'm very big on making what you can of your tools and your sacred items, because even if it's not something you make 100%, if you can put your own energy into it at one at one point or another in the pro in the creating process, it makes a big difference, I think. Like, I can't draw at all, but I really wanted my Book of Shadows to have some decorations. So what I did is I have, as you can see, the old uh, Llewellyn Almanacs from 2014. I have one from 2013. And I took some of the little drawings from inside and tore them out, cut them out, trimmed them up nice, and then I colored them with colored pencils and some metallic markers. And those are going to go on the pages for those Sabbaths 
when I finish creating my book of shadows, which is sort of a long work in progress. <laughs> but that way I can decorate my pages and it can be unique and pretty, but I don't have to like attempt to do something I can't do, which is draw. I can't draw. So, um, so I get, let me give you a rundown of the items on my altar. I have, as I said, this olive wood, uh, like I said, I believe it's from Pakistan, mortar and pestle, um, which I got at Marshall's, Marshall's, and I also, then I have this little bell, which is from India, and I like it better than a regular bell because of the way it has just a more musical chime, and it really echoes. You can hear that, how it lingers, which is really helpful when you're trying to direct energy or raise energy. It lingers and sort of spreads out. It's wonderful. Um, this is my sensor. It has an old charcoal in there. Uh, it's part of a set with this here, but this bell, as you can see, they are basically a very similar pattern and also from India. A little brass tray, like a dish that I put it on just to be safe. It gets really warm, as you know, anybody knows. It probably wouldn't damage the fabric of the altar cloth, but I'm a little protective of it. So I got this little dish and I set the sensor inside the dish just for a little extra added layer of protection. Uh, as you may notice, my altar, uh, my symbols of the elements, the four corners, are a little, well, they look like they might be out of place. The reason for that is my altar faces this wall, which is blank right now, but that is not the north. And north is this way. For a while, I had the altar under the window, in front of the window, but I was concerned about the candles and the curtains, so I moved it over here and just oriented my items towards the north. That might also lead you to notice that on my altar, the fire, the element of fire, the symbolism, or sorry, the representation for fire is in the north. Traditionally, it's the south flame, but for me, it is always felt unnatural. I am a big proponent of doing what works for you and what feels right for you. So for me, fire goes in the north. It makes sense in a logical sense to me. Uh, fire above, bowl of salt for earth below in the south. That just makes sense to me, and it uh, resonates with me. So that's how I set up my altar. I have fire in the north, which is represented by this just plain white candle. Uh, the east is the air for the incense. As I said, I have this pentagram box filled with sea salt to represent earth, and a little sake cup as my chalice for water. It, uh, not my chalice, it's my representation for water. It is also my chalice, the second one, and the sake pitcher. These, the sake set, it was a gift from my father-in-law. And it has really good vibes. It just feels really good. And so I decided that when I needed something for my altar to hold the water, and also for cakes and ale after a, a ritual, I decided to use, instead of buying a chalice or an offer, or a offering bowl or something like that or a, to represent water and to use for cakes and ale, I decided to use the sake set because I love it. So there's that. I do have an offering bowl. It's a bit weird. Uh, it's actually a box. If you'll notice this pentagram, which, is, which I'm currently using as an altar tile, is actually the lid for this box. It's a soapstone box. Uh, but I use 
the lid as my pentacle and the empty box as my offering bowl. Currently there is a little copper wire for leaf clover. Oops, and a bit of my cat's fluff. <laughs> so there's that. Uh, there's a ring here. This is a bit of ceremonial jewelry that I only wear in ritual. And I leave, so I just leave it on the altar and let it soak up all the energy. Oops, sorry. I accidentally shut my camera off. Uh, next is my wand and my atame. Um, it's a fairly standard atame. Uh, it is black handled under here, but I had this silk sari ribbon. Uh, it's a remnant from the making of saris in India and or India. Oh God, where was it made? I can't. I'm sorry, I can't remember exactly the country it was made in. I got it from a lady on Etsy, and I wrapped my atame in it because I think it's pretty. And I'm not really a gothy, black, colored, everything sort of person. I much prefer bright colors, richer colors, things that are fun. So I think my altar. Sorry about that. My memory card filled up. <laughs> I think I'm rambling. I'll probably have to edit this down. Uh, anyway, uh, like I was saying, I like bright colors and fun things, so that's how come I wrapped my Athame in the pink silk ribbon, because it's pretty. Uh, also, it personalizes it. As I said, even if you can't make every tool, you can personalize them and give them your energy and thing make it represent you. Also, kind of a funny story, yesterday, as I was re- uh, moving my altar over to this position because as I said I had it over by the window before. Uh, I've had this off on May for I think about a year and a half but like I said for about a year about, a, about the past year I haven't really been practicing very often or really at all and I hadn't had a chance to do a full sort of dedication in binding my asame to me and making, sort of making it mine. I have a whole thing that I usually do. And I hadn't done that. And apparently yesterday my Athame decided it had been too long and I should, it was going to take things out of my hands and pricked my finger on my pinky really good. I don't know if you can see. No. But pricked it really good and I started bleeding all over the place and all over the blade. You can sort of still see it's all smeared. I just left the blood on there. I was like, well, you wanted to be dedicated to me clearly, and now you are. Because that is sort of part of what I usually do, is anoint the blade with just a little drop of my blood or whatever. So, my alpha may dedicated itself to me yesterday, <laughs> which was fun and whatever. That's how things usually happen in my life. Um, next is my wand, which is kind of a story. So let me sit down and tell you my story of my wand. It is one of my favorite things in the world. Uh, I made it myself, actually. It is an oak stick from the trees. There we go. See that tree outside my window? It is from that tree. And this branch fell off of the tree during Hurricane Sandy. And after Hurricane Sandy, I was out in do, going for went for a walk and this stick just I had to pick it up at the, at the time I wasn't actually even looking for a wand um, but it called to me and I picked it up and I peeled the bark off of it and sanded it smooth and then just sort of set it on my altar and sort of forgot about it and was like you know eventually I'll probably do something with that well, I finally was inspired by to think, figure out what I wanted to do with it. As you can see, it is copper wrapped and I have stones all up and down the shaft. <laughs> shaft. Um, there's rose quartz, there's amethyst, and there's sodalite. All three stones are very personal to me. Sodalite especially, but rose quartz is sort of my go-to stone 
and amethyst have always resonated with me. I wear one for protection all the time. In fact, I'll show you. I have here, you can't really see because of the light, but I have an amethyst and a sodalite point that I wear pretty much all the time. It is wrapped at the base in green suede cord. Uh, and figuring out how to do, how to get the beads, the stone beads, onto this shaft without like gluing them, which I didn't want to do because glue kind of seems really unnatural and I didn't want to put glue on my wand. So figuring out how to do this wire wrapping, which I had laying around from my wife, she, uh, she dabbles in making her own jewelry. So we, we had this copper wire and copper wire is, is good for conducting energy. So I was going to wrap the wand in wire anyway. And I decided to give a try with the actual wire wrapping with the stones. And it's messy. As you can see, there is a lot, a lot of wire. So it's a bit messy, but it's really personal. It's the best I could do. I'm not an artist. And I'm really happy with how it turned out. It has a really good energy in my hand. The little handle, there's this little notch here that my finger goes perfectly. It's just, it's great. I love it. So, as I said, do what you can do. Try new things. I've never done that before. It turned out pretty good. And it turned out really personal for me. It's not something that I think you necessarily want to buy in a store because it's kind of messy, but it's what I could do. It's what I was able to, you know, create, and that makes it the perfect tool for me. So if you can at all try to do anything to personalize your stuff, you really should because it makes it feel so much nicer when you use it. Is that everything on my altar? No. Uh, just a little brass candle snuffer simple, doesn't really have any special meaning. Neither do these two three black candle holders in the back. These two smaller ones though, with the little beeswax spells candles in them, uh, they're not actually going to be used. Those spell candles won't actually be used for like illumination or anything. I just have them in there because I don't like empty candlestick holders. And I love these candlestick holders. I had these exact candlesticks holders, the set. What? 15 years ago, when I, uh, in a whole nother life, basically. And they were lost to me in a move when an ex didn't pay the storage facility fees and all of our stuff got auctioned off, including all of my altar stuff. Yeah, so, but I, sa I found these on eBay. They're from Italy. They're Italy. They're Italian. And they're just little brass uh, candlestick holders, sort of ornate at the bases and stuff. Specifically meant for small, like, chime candles or these little small size spell candles. I eventually intend to get some chime candles and use them in there. For now, like I said, those spell candles. But those won't actually be used for anything but spells. I'll be taking them out. But for right now, I haven't gotten any chime candles yet, and I didn't want them to be empty. So that is my altar at current. It's obviously not decorated for any specific Sabbath or moon phase or anything like that. It's just it's just my standard basic altar. I eventually plan to get some stuff to hang on the walls, but right now I don't have anything. And I'm going to leave this video here because it's getting really long and I do have more of my sacred space that I'd like to share, but I will do that in another video and hopefully you will tune in. So thank you for finding and watching my channel, my very first video. I realized at the beginning I didn't actually introduce myself. My name's Faye, um, as in fairy, but I go by Faye, and that's what everybody calls me. Um, so you can feel free to call me that too. And yeah, I and Precious say bye-bye. No? All right.
Later, guys.